up guys? Okay, it's getting ready to do our ZV-E10 review. Of course, I have the camera in my hands for a, a few weeks now. Here's kind of setting up. And uh, we're using the all new 16 to 50 OSS lens by Sony on ZV-E10. This is the longest name file I've ever heard of a camera for quite some time. <laughs> yep. It's a droid from Star Wars. It's a Sony exclusive. <laughs> Okay, talking about the ZV-E10, who is this camera for? Why is it even in the market? Is it something to look into? Let's talk about this. Now, the ZV-E10 is sort of an evolution of the ZV-1 of last year. Now, we re uh, did that review. We'll put a link in the, up here, but you know, check out this because obviously this is the newest and the latest and the greatest. But the ZV-1 was a camera that I think a lot of people were looking for, especially if they wanted an ARX 100 series camera, but more for videographers, that camera fit the bill. But as we know, the compact camera segment has sort of been taking a hit as of late because of smartphones. This has been happening over the past few years, but we're seeing it even more so now. So the evolution of the ZV series with the ZV E10 makes a lot of sense from Sony. Now you get a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor in this, 4K to 30 internally on it. You can do photos as well. You have interchangeable lenses. You still have your background defocus and product showcase buttons that you had on the ZV one of last year. It's a slightly larger body. You have the internal mic with the windscreen that you can put on top with this as well you have a lot of those things that were part of the uh, part of the great things that we liked about the zv1 but now in a camera that i think is more versatile and comes in at a price point with this 1650 oss kit lens at 999 singapore dollars that's a hard bargain to say no to especially for what this camera does in terms of performance autofocus tracking we're going to test all that out in this video but yeah in a nutshell the zv e10 to me is the evolution of the compact camera. And I think Sony has done a lot of great things with it. So let's walk around, put this camera to its paces. It's meant for vloggers. It's meant for people to do YouTube like we're doing right now. So let's see how it performs. All right guys, now we're recording on the ZV-10. I'm actually using the internal mic with the uh, windscreen on it to sort of uh, you know, buffer out the external noise. So you're gonna get to get that internal audio out of this. So I'm gonna zoom out as far as I can go. Now this is a 1650 lens, so that's about equivalent to about a 2470 thereabouts on full frame. And I'm holding this out in front of me with the Bluetooth uh, grip. And as you can see, the steady shot's working relatively well. And the framing is not too bad. I mean, I think this would be much better for vlogging in terms of its focal length than other cameras in Sony's lineup that were in this small range. So I think this is actually a really good thing. Um, and it's a very comfortable hold. As you can tell, the color science is a little bit better here on the camera. You can do S-Log2, S-Log3, HLG. You can do all that in this. There is no s tone. I don't think they're gonna put s tone into the zv one e 10 If they do, that would be great. That would be my default uh, picture profile, but it is not in there currently at this time. But looking at my skin tones right now out of the screen, I think I've got a nice warm skin tone. I don't, I'm not getting that sort of that magenta look or that push that I used to get out of Sony cameras. But I think Sony sort of uh, fixed that skin tone issue for the most part. And uh, the ZV E10 is looking pretty good. Now, I will try a couple things here. I will try the background defocus. Let me just pop that on. So uh, defocus in the background just slightly, of course. Now I am in aperture priority in terms of video. So my shutter speed's at one over 250. And I think I'm probably at the, uh, fastest aperture on this which is about a 3.5 but uh, as you can tell it looks relatively good no issues at all with that and yeah there's Kai Hong right there Kai Hong look at that eye tracking is fantastic on this there's also touch tracking but you're also getting that faster auto focusing uh, system that is in uh, newer Sony cameras you are getting it in this as well the eye box is sticking on my eye like glue which is fantastic Kai Hong, show this box on my eye look how good this is it's on me like glue Yep. This is almost, uh, I don't want to say it's A1 level, but this is very impressive. I don't think anything could be an A1 level. I don't think the ZV-1, trust me guys, I'm just exaggerating a bit, but this is really good in terms of how it's tracking my eye. And that's the one th nice thing I like about Sony cameras for videos, you just don't need to worry, just record and off you go. Okay, now I'm gonna put on the Deity D4 Duo to see how the audio is improved with that. And then uh, we'll try out some other functionalities with this camera.
Okay, now I put the camera in auto mode just to let it do its thing. I've got the Deity D4 Duo microphone on top of this now, so the, the audio quality might be a little bit different. Also have the windscreen on that as well. And this is a great little microphone for these kind of cameras. It's small, compact, lightweight. And yeah, this is the business. Now, in terms of this Bluetooth grip, now Sony has been, uh, they've had this grip out for quite some time, and we actually did a video on this grip, uh, I think about a year or two ago, right Kyle? A while, a while back, right? Yeah. And we were using it on an A7 III, I think, at the time. Yeah. So, obviously this grip is meant for smaller cameras. As you can tell, the stabilization is much better, but I can control the uh, zooming in. Look at that. Zooming in. Move out with the lens. See if it goes back. No? <laughs> the grip isn't working. I'll manually do it. Bluetooth grip. Doesn't always work. Anyway, talking about the grip for a moment here, it's a little bit of a, it's very tedious to set up. It's like a two-step process, and I had to watch a video. Sony, if you're watching this, can you make the setup with the Bluetooth grip a lot easier? A one press button, you know, like a one button press and you're, you know, synced up versus having to go to Bluetooth settings, turn it on, got to hold this, uh, the photo and the T button down for seven seconds, pair the uh, grip to the camera, but it doesn't work yet because then you have to turn on Bluetooth controller and then you can actually use the grip. So yeah, not the easiest thing to use Sony, but once it's working, it works relatively well, except for the point where I zoomed in like this and then it doesn't want to go back out. So I'll just manually do it. Okay, why well, you want to go forward again, huh? <laughs> why you want to go forward again? Oh my God, this is crazy. Kion, it's, it's possessed. It's possessed. Stay, stay. Okay, we're good. If it zooms in, all right, this thing's right. possessed. I don't know if it is, but anyway, uh, it looks like we're good to go now on this. But uh, yeah, this is essentially the uh, ZV-E10. Not too bad. Look at this. Look at the eye tracking on this. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look how good this is, Kyle. Look at this. I'm gonna walk back with you. We're gonna do some stunt work right now. You're walking back, I'm walking back, and we're actually recording this. Look at this. Holy <laughs> cow. And it's still on my eye. It's still on my eye. Look at that. On you. On me, on you, on me. Look at that, this is impressive. Now let's try the product feature. Now here's the hardest part about this, is that button is on the back of the camera, whereas the defocus button is right here, right? Defocus, right in front, bam, it works. But the product button is actually assigned to the trash can. So I think this is it. Okay, product button. So I'm gonna do watch me, watch, me. Look at that. Can I just turn that off? Okay. What's nice also about this is that um, it's also sort of a, seeing the light behind me in terms of it's, it's adjusting that. So right now I see backlight portrait and at certain times where it's darker, just go to portrait mode. So it's constantly evaluating the scene. So if you just want to like just run and gun and don't think much about it, just put it in auto mode. Honestly speaking, nobody's going to know the difference. I mean, you don't have any cinematographers there that are going to be grading you on your uh, DP skills. As long as the video is good and people can hear you, that's the most important part. I'm loving the skin tone. Kyle, look at the skin tone on this. Can we just talk? Look at the skin tone. Look at that. That's nice. That's nice skin tone, right? Yep. That's nice, man. <whistles> Sony, you're doing some good things. You know what? Ooh, all right. Why don't we put your lens on this? Let's see how it goes. Okay. Sure. Let's do that. Okay, now we're using uh, Kai Hong's Sony 18 to, was it 105? 105 G lens. And uh, let me just widen this out as far as it goes. So, yeah, it works relatively well. This obviously is a heavier setup now. He's got an ND filter on this in the front of it, a variable ND, so I'm actually using that right now. So I am going to a manual exposure and aperture at f4, 1 over 50, because I'm shooting at 4K uh, 25p on this. And yeah, look at this, cinematic, Kai Hong, cinematic. But the eye tracking still looking good on me. Look at that, boom, looking good, sticking on me like glue. There you are. He's using the 1650, yep. uh, the new lens. Now this lens that he's using, which is on the ZV-E10, is a very lightweight. It feels a little bit, um, I would say it doesn't feel as heavy or as durable as other lenses, but it's quite sharp actually. Let me just adjust the, uh, 
the variable ND on that one, but it's actually very sharp for what it is. This is a very good little kit lens for this camera system. And I'll even show you some photos as well. We'll take some pictures of the buildings around here just to give you an idea in terms of, you know, distortion or anything vignetting, anything like that. But yes, you can take photos with this camera, but it, of course, it is meant for video first and foremost. But uh, yeah, look at this. We're doing pretty good today. It's a holiday here, so there's not many people around. That's why we can shoot this because this camera is still secret as of the time of this recording. Do you think anybody would recognize this camera? Probably well, not, right? Hot, Probably hot. just it us being. Difficult. I mean, unless they're diehard Sony fans, they'll recognize it. Otherwise, it kind of looks like an A6000 series. All right, guys, let's uh, let's take some photos, and we'll show you some photos here, and uh, give you an idea of the image quality coming out of the ZV-E10. So my final thoughts on the ZV-E10, I like this camera for what it is. Um, I think the price point is fantastic. I think the quality that it delivers, especially for the price point is, again, Sony sort of flexing their muscles and saying, this is what we can bring to the table and sort of change the consumer camera market, especially for videographers out there. And I think this is a great way to get people into video because yes, the ZV-1 last year was a really nice camera, but it's a very compact camera. And of course, with a one inch sensor versus an APS-C sensor, you're gonna get much better image quality out of a camera system like this. You have the uh, versatility of an interchangeable lens. You have all the same features as product showcase and background defocus. You have the ability to you know, go from wide angle to telephoto zoom on this from the camera or from the lens itself. And it just is a package that's fantastic. You have a mic input jack, a headphone jack, HDMI, USB-C charging. Yes, the battery life isn't the best. I charged uh, this camera up this morning at full, uh, 100%. We're down about 75% based on the footage that I'm showing right now. And yeah, you'll need to get a couple batteries, but again, for the price point, it's not a deal breaker. Flip out rotatable display. It doesn't have the new menu system, but again, I wasn't expecting that from Sony. Only one SD card slot. Would I wish there was two? Sure. But again, price point, who this camera is for, I don't think it's gonna be much of an issue. Um, but I think for a lot of vloggers out there, YouTubers, people that wanna do videos for Facebook and Instagram, this is a no brainer to be frank with you. Even if you want a B camera in your studio setup and you just wanna have a nice side angle, you're not gonna lose a lot of image quality on this. I mean, we shoot on a, a, a6500 for the most of our reviews here. A lot of you comment on that you love the image quality out of that. This is essentially that camera, but at a much less expensive price point. Now, I do wish there was an EVF. There is no EVF on this, but again, this is meant for videographers. I do wish there was a dedicated mode dial because as of right now, at least how I'm using the camera, I have to go into the function uh, button. I press the function button, then I have to select the mode I want to go into. There is a button on top that allows you to go from a photo mode to video to S&Q mode, but there is no dedicated mode dial, so I wish that was there. But outside of that, the ZV-E10, Honestly, if you're into video, this is a really, really good camera. It's the baby brother to the FX3, and I think Sony's done a tremendous job with it. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the ZV-E10. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Am I missing out anything? I wasn't that detailed in this review because this camera is not designed for that. It's been for the average user that just wants really good video and good photography, and they don't want to think too much about it. So with that, guys, stay safe, take care. Follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and I'll see you at the next one. Later.